Hi, I'm Wade. And I'm Lorraine. And we are On, on the, the Off-Ramp. Off -ramp. Today we're going to share with you a little bit about our four-month journey. So when we got home, my goodness, we did get a lot of questions. Things like, would you do that again? And what were your highlights? I think people wanted us to share just bits of it, but hard to talk just a little bit of our trip, it wasn't it? Yeah, and it so wasn't many. even just when we got home. Throughout the trip, too, we had people asking us, yeah. like, what did you really enjoy? Or, or, or what were things that you would change and things like, you know. Or what was the best place to go? Yeah, so. best place. What was the nicest campground? So over the course of our next videos, today we're going to deal with uh, what our highlights were. Yeah. And then, and uh, next video, you'll probably hear more about what we do different, whether or not we're going to go on another trip, and, and what we're going to change, and what we loved about it, and what we... Uh, Definitely, we'll have to do different. That's right. So that's next video. This video, what were the highlights? All right. Well, so our five highlights of our trip are, are not going to be in any specific order because it's hard to actually place them what's the most important. Yeah, but yeah. Our beginning, uh, first one that we want to share with you is the connections that people make. Wade and I have watched a lot of other RV travelers that do YouTube and we notice that they often share about the people they meet. So for me, it was a real blessing to start our trip off at Tyler, Texas at a YWAM school. They're run by friends of ours, Jeff and Heather, and it was great to see and meet the students and the parents of that little uh, community and school. We were there how many weeks? We were there uh, two weeks, and uh, we got to spend a lot of time with Jeff and Heather and their boys, and that was really good. And, and then of course we met many of the other staff and had a nice Thai dinner and things oh, like yeah. that. So. so part of traveling is meeting the people and some of this was with people we didn't know and some people that are new friends yeah. and some are with old friends. So that was great. Yeah, and then as we moved along, I mean, we moved over to, um, oh, eventually we were at, at Padre Island, South Padre Island. And, yeah. and uh, there we met you know some people on the beach that were camping there and that was kind of neat, like seeing what other people, how they live their lives uh, RVing. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, in a I mean, van, some, car campers. Yeah, many were lifers, and and uh, you know we met one guy, uh, Lloyd. We'll bring his name out just because he helped us get out of the sand. So, <laughs> so and and uh, yeah, you can watch that video if you'd like. Yeah, again, yeah. and so and then the other thing is, as we're traveling along, we um, also planned to meet up with good friends, Alvin and Val, and we spent two weeks with them in Phoenix, Arizona area, and traveled. And I mean, we. Saw. We explored that area yeah. with them. It was yeah. so much fun just to be with old friends and doing all that kind of, and seeing these things for the first time. And then also while we were in Arizona to hang out with my Aunt Margaret as well and she could show us the ins and outs of some of the places she goes to. And then we met with uh, three, uh, four other couples there as well too. Yeah, yeah, old from, friends uh, from old our friends community. Old friends and new friends and yeah. uh, you know, new we, friends that we just made here in Winnipeg. We met them in Phoenix or in Palm Springs. I, I don't think Wade and I thought we were going to run into so many people during the trip. No. Well, okay, so we can't forget though, then on Padre Island we also met Brent and Liz. Yes. And, uh, and <laughs> we've, we've spent... Canadians. Canadians. They're from Kelowna. We've spent actually three different times with them. Uh, the first time they stayed and visited quite a while at, at Padre Island as yeah, we camped. They on were the, driving by. They saw our sign on, on our van. And then we met them again by a happenstance. We met them at uh, Big Bend National Park, and uh, their motorhome had broken down. So we spent some time with them there until until their motorhome was until the tow truck came. Until the tow truck came and, and hauled them away. And, and then we had lunch with them later on in uh, Kelowna yeah. when we went through Kelowna. When so. we were staying in Kelowna, we. We connected with them and had supper with them. So you yeah. know, yeah, it's just been it's been nice, and and all the way along, like in Washington as well, we met some people in Tacoma, Washington, and uh, we were able to join them for a day or two at their place. Of course, you have to watch that, or if you haven't watched that video, yeah. this is where Wade ends up with complete strangers playing bluegrass, and he was happy. We they I it didn't, was wonderful. I didn't look like I was happy. <laughs> But I, was, I was happy. I was just concentrating. <laughs> yeah, they were playing some great music and it was very fun to hang out with them. Yeah. And then in the end, we also added a lot of uh, relatives along the way. A lot of Wade's family live out west and so it was fun to be able to connect with them. We had no idea that this trip actually would be so people-y. Yeah. Did you think that? No. Well, we didn't know. We, it, was, it was hard. We haven't done this before, so we didn't know what to expect. But. It was good. I mean, the highlight, of course, was spending two weeks with Alvin and Val. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, you know, the fact that we could spend two weeks together and just explore together. Okay. So, okay, so uh, one of our other highlights, the second highlight for us, again, not in any conceivable order, but the second highlight would be just seeing things, seeing oh, yeah. the beauty around us and well, just even, exploring together. Yeah, exploring together. And so many of these things were new to both of us. That's there, right. Yeah. Uh, there are some of the places that we've traveled, we've been before. We've been to Arizona before. 
But then when we went to Big Bend National Park, yeah. that was new to us and we, thing is, you see it on other people's videos and you go, okay, we're gonna go there. Yeah. Some of that was, I mean, we watched a lot of videos, I think before we left on our trip, and that really helped us pick up some locations, yeah, don't you did. think? Yeah, it did. I mean, we'd, we'd heard about Padre Island, friends had told us about it, and they said, yeah, you gotta go camp on the beach. And, yeah, and, we did it. And we did it, and, and so it was neat exploring. We got to experience that for the first time. But even, there. we'd even seen videos about like white sands, and we're going, well, big deal, a bunch of sand dunes, but in the end, it's a big deal. It was it spectacular. Was, yeah, it was spectacular. I'm so glad we stopped there and made that part of our trip. So I think seeing new things together was a real... Yeah, yeah, we both like to explore. We both like to see that, and, and it was just a highlight, just, the fact that we got to see all these things that others have experienced and, and many others hope they can and we hope you can one day as well too. Well and what's really neat is as soon as we go back into the van to drive to the next location there's always this little sense of excitement once you left one and on to the next. That's right. Loved, loved that. Yeah. One of the other highlights is you know when we live in Manitoba and it's flat prairie land you kind of take some of this for granted. I mean yesterday driving along the canola fields and the blue sky that is a Manitoba beauty. But when, we're when we went on this holiday, we were seeing new things for us. And the desert landscape, or the white sands of White Sands National Park. Yeah, yeah, there, there was just so many different things to experience. And, and just the beauty, the of difference. Creation. The difference of the continent of North America, I mean, the difference yeah. in, in, in creation across North America is just phenomenal in itself, so. I often find when I'm looking at something that's amazing, like the big redwoods, you just want to just hold it in your breath. I just go, oh, look at that, look at that. We're driving along, look, look over there, look over there. We're just constantly pointing stuff out to each other that we're seeing and for the first time. Maybe we sound like little kids, I don't know. But it, that really is incredible. The stacks along the, the ocean, sea, the, the sea, sea stacks. stacks. Yeah. Oh, and just seeing the ocean like that. So. That would be a highlight, all the new things to us that us prairie people haven't seen before. That's right, yeah. Okay, one of the more frequent questions that we've been asked is, what was your favorite stop? What was your favorite campground? Yeah, like, where did you park your van and yeah. loved it the most kind of thing. Yeah. Wow, that was tough. We saw, we saw quite a few. Okay, well, here's the thing. I loved it when we parked by the ocean, and we did that three times, right? Well, at Pins? Right, yeah, right by the ocean. Yeah, right by the ocean three times. At Pins and at South Padre and then again at Rincon. And all of these are opportunities to have your van as close to the water as possible. In all three cases, it's boondocking. There's no hookups. And probably the hard part of those, it sounds amazing to do that, and it was beautiful, but we didn't always have great weather. No, we didn't always <laughs> have great weather. In fact, uh, one of my favorite campgrounds was um, Cape Disappointment in Washington oh. and uh, it was ugly weather. It was cold and windy and wet and rainy. And at and one point there was even a little bit of snowy sleety. Yeah, there. a bit of yeah, grapple, grapple they call it or something know. like that. I think they it hurt the it. face. Yeah, it was, <laughs> but it was a beautiful campground and the ocean was just absolutely beautiful. The waves were tremendous. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, there were so many campgrounds that were good. Like. Um, but I know which one I think you thought was your favorite. Which one do you think I thought was my favorite? Well, at least you said it at one point. We change our minds, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Redwoods. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the campground in the oh. Redwoods was beautiful. I mean, just being around the Redwoods was... Yeah. To put it in perspective, as we looked at these trees, there was only one way I could put it in perspective for myself, and that was to think at 2,500 years old, yeah. these trees were around when Jesus walked the earth. Yeah. And to me, like, like in Manitoba, we have nothing that old. We're lucky if we have something 200 years old, really, building-wise. Well, in, a in terms of trees, years. you mean? Yeah, no, no, but I'm, anything, like anything yeah, old. Yeah, like, maybe. Like we don't even have buildings that are a couple hundred years old. So, so to, see, to see something that old, that magnificent, and that yeah. stunning, and yeah. to put it in its place that way, like to say the, the history of it. So I think, to me, that was the most stunning thing. Yeah, so I think that was, I think we aren't really the type that did a lot of museums or uh, toured inside of cities that much. No. And I think for us it was about staying in nature. Of course, with Wade being a photographer, he has an eye for that and a heart for that. But I, I, as, I love to paint and draw, so for me, 
to just to see those stacks and try to capture some of the things we saw in my in my watercolors or Wade in his yeah. you know photography. We, so there, there was a lot of beauty. I mean, even yeah, oh um, my. even Joshua Tree National Park was oh. stunning because it's again things we hadn't seen before, and it was rocks like you've never seen them before. So yeah, there's so many things, but yeah, the redwoods took it for me. But the Redwoods was, the, the actual campground was really Yeah, it was, a, it was a state park campground. I think it was, yeah, that was a state park one. And it was a beautiful campground. Yeah. And there, there we had that challenge of uh, being in this gorgeous campground, but no electricity. And we needed some electricity for a few things oh, yeah. and had to run our <laughs> generator. And I know how people go, well, you got it, you use it, but, and you can, you're allowed to during the day, but here was this wonderful young couple. Were they car camping next to yeah, us? Yeah, they were car camping. And they were, you know, having this nice little fire and having their supper by their campfire. And I'm going, and they have to listen to our generator. I felt so bad. I made Wade go bring them some mangoes. <laughs> we had just bought a whole bunch of mangoes on sale at, I think our favorite grocery store, Fred Meyer. <laughs> I have no idea where. But. Or somewhere anyway. So I brought them half of our mangoes, said they should enjoy mangoes too. How, <laughs> how do you feel when you use your generator in a gorgeous campground like that, where you feel like, oh, I'm just disrupting the beauty yeah. here? Yeah, I didn't mind using the generator at Rincon because there you're on a Everybody highway did. with a loud ocean beside you and a Amtrak mm -hmm. rail <laughs> right beside Trains, us. Like it was going trucks. quite regularly. So the generator didn't matter there, but in the redwoods, you know, you want to keep it quiet. Yeah, Rincon we, wasn't peace and quiet. No. It was the view. Yeah. So yeah. campground wise, yeah, there's a bunch of good campgrounds I, that were just oh, enjoyable. Yeah. Now, a lot of people that know me know I love Mexican food and I always threaten <laughs> that when we're traveling in the US, so we'll, we'll eat Mexican every day because we don't, we can't find that here in Canada. Well, we don't have as many right here in Manitoba <laughs> where we're at and Wade does a great job of cooking Mexican, but he just loves Mexican food. I love Mexican food. And we probably could have worked harder to find more Mexican yeah. restaurants. But, but we did get asked what were some of the favorite meals that you had out. We tried to eat in or on our own as much oh as yeah, possible. Oh yeah, we tried to cook in the van more. Yeah, we tried to cook in the van as much as possible, but, but sometimes you just wanted to eat out, so. Yeah. Yeah, so we had a few favorites and, and a few not so favorites. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the one in Laredo, that Mexican restaurant, oh, you yeah. enjoyed that. Palenque was, Grill. Palenque uh, Grill? Yeah, the Palenque Grill on, uh, I think it was Palenque Grill Highway 35 or something like that was called. It's probably the best Excuse Mexican me. food I think I've ever had in a restaurant. It was fantastic. We might have been pretty hungry too, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm still picky. <laughs> <laughs> but was, it was it was fantastic. And for me, it was kind of fun to go to this Lorraine's Bakery in San Antonio. Oh yeah. I'm, I mean, it was it was lovely and it was a neat atmosphere and uh, and I bought a amazing chocolate croissant there, so. Yeah, and at the other end of the scale, I think the most overhyped one that we went to was a, <gasps> It was oh. an Italian food restaurant in in uh, Palm Springs. Yeah, it was overhyped, and we're not going to talk about it much. No, but we it's, were kicked out after an hour and a half. Yeah, because there was a time limit. There's a time limit because they were quite busy. But it's probably the most the most we spent on a least favorite <laughs> meal. Oh well, it's okay. But we had a good time learn. with good friends there, so we met some good friends yeah. from Winnipeg there. So that was the best. That part was the of best it, part the of it. <laughs> but our visit was cut short. Yeah, no kidding. So our next video, we're gonna probably spend more time about what would we do different? If you're planning a trip like this, we have some tips for you that you might wanna think of and consider. We'll tell you a little bit about how we went into our planning process for this and what we would change. What we would change. And uh, we'll also highlight our costs. Yeah. What did, what did this trip cost us? Uh, where, yeah. where could we have saved more money? Uh, how could we have done things better? But if you have any questions for us about our trip, and things that you're curious about as you want to plan yours or how you want to go about it. Uh, uh, Leave them in the comment section below. Yeah. Um, anything that, that you're curious about, about our trip, anything that, you, uh, that you're thinking, well, I'd like to do that, but what about this or what about that? Because um, there's lots of things we probably haven't covered that you may want to know. Do you want to ask us? Yeah. Do you want to know what it was like to live shoulder to shoulder for four <laughs> months in a van? Yeah. Great. <laughs> So you might imagine that we were done with the van after being together, but you know, I can hardly wait to get back into it and get out and do more camping. We've only gone on two excursions, which kind of well, surprises us. Three, three, I guess, really. Two family ones oh, at yeah. the Clear Lake. Yeah, so. So, kind of, so in the end, uh, we haven't been in the van as much as we were last summer or even as yeah. much as we thought, but... But work kind of got in the way, and, and uh, which is a good thing too, because it helps us pay for more holidays. Yeah. But um, I've been busy with some uh, photography contracts that came out of the blue, so 
I've been keeping myself out of trouble, but it's been keeping us away from camping as well. We'll get back there. We're not worried yeah, about that at all. No. But if there's one thing we've learned, well, we all have of this. planned a few other trips though too. Oh yes. That's yeah, we true. do Oops. have. We have another week coming up that we'll be gone, and then we're hoping this fall that we're heading heading out and doing some more traveling again this fall before winter comes. So, but if there's one thing we have learned, it's we need to, to hold, hold our, our plans, plans loosely. loosely.